Everybody and welcome to Hey Man. I'm Josh and I am Jacob. And today we have uh, a good friend of mine. Uh, how long have we known each other, man? Oh, I mean, early 2000s. Early 2000s. Dan Levy is here. I'm I, here. I um, I like to start out the pods just by giving everybody their flowers a little bit. I want to tell you something about you, dude. Okay. Maybe the only person that I have ever come across in Hollywood. Where I've never heard one person say a bad word about you. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> not just not a bad word, dude, but people are so complimentary because in this town, uh, like, you know, when you go into a casting director's office and you do a read and they're like, that was amazing. Yeah. Like all my auditions. Yeah. <laughs> That I never got. That was amazing. Zero, I, zero roles. Any notes? No notes. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But you know you're walking out of there and you're never going to hear from them again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a lot of insincere friendliness. Yes. Because people are too scared just to be human and be like, hey, we like you, but you're just not right for right. us. Your friendliness is so genuine and sincere. This is the thing that people say about you, just so you know that. Oh, like, he's one of the most genuinely nice people, especially in this town. You do what you say. You're a good friend. Yo, Kenny Garcia told me to hug you. <laughs> And pull you when we hugged. He said, make sure it's hands, middle of the back, tip to tip. Okay, okay. So he wanted to go serious hug. Like okay. we just pulled you out of a cave or something. Well, he lives in Florida now. Yes, yeah. That's, maybe that's why. We're that's, that's, that's the type of hug he wanted. Yeah, yeah. But I just want you to know, man, like sometimes nobody in this lifetime, people tell you what other people think. That's what people are saying about you is not only forget how funny you are, all that stuff. We know how, because that's how you wouldn't be getting these jobs or having Netflix hire you if you weren't successful, if you weren't funny and, and, and good at your job. The most important shit, dude, mm -hmm. people genuinely like you as a good person. So I'm, it's, uh, this is my favorite podcast I've ever been on. <laughs> <laughs> you, but there aren't that many people like that here. So man, super oh, kudos. I, I, I love you. I don't know you, know you that well, but you went to the same school as my son. So I'm sure well, you're cool. You too. How about that? <laughs> I, love you I too. mean, <laughs> when I, when I said, Hey, Dan Levy's going to be on the, podcast his first question when he goes the pedophile i go i don't think so <laughs> no <laughs> no dan, and then dan. he comes and he goes oh no that's dan schneider yeah, i was like yeah. so not dan levy yeah 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 so yeah. not my name yeah, yeah, so yeah, not, yeah, yeah. There, there's yeah. tons of people with the same name as me but dan schneider is not one of them when i told you that <laughs> yeah, yeah, schneider and levy are way different by the way yeah, yeah, yeah. you were like there are so many dan levy's there could be one <laughs> Uh, it's possible, yeah, but Rob, maybe Rob I got, should pull my kid from the school you went to. <laughs> to if that's able, what they're teaching. Yeah, exactly. Where, by the way, where did you grow? Up? I grew up in Stanford, Connecticut. Oh, and so Stanford, by the way, my parents lived there for two years. I first, think I knew that. We talked about this. Yeah, that's the first house I ever remember going to of theirs on the East Coast. Is that Connecticut house? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the cat? No, that was up upstate New York. That was a New York house. Yeah, that was Wyndham, New York. Ooh, Wyndham. Yeah, Stanford's a great place. Lots of white people, lots of squirrels. Uh, and it's the home of the WWE. Yeah. So that's the big thing about Stanford. Uh, and now it's so massive. But growing up, it was WWF. And it was still cool. And the wrestlers would always come to our elementary school and, like, give us, like, assemblies. <laughs> and they would do, like, the don't do drugs. where They were, like, like, all jacked up on steroids. It was the, insane. Who was the best one that came? The boss man. Oh, could you, yeah. could you imagine yeah, Macho man. man coming to do a dare speech? Oh, I know. Oh, my God. All coked up. Uh, yeah, those guys are all coked up, that, roided up, just waiting for their hearts to explode. It's funny. He's giving us advice. Because his, his favorite his favorite wrestler of all time is Macho Man. And Without he would always, uh, you know, you see the clips and you see the, the, the thin line of sweat and the crazy eyes. I remember, I remember me asking you, I was like, Yo, know, how did not more of them die in the ring on TV? Like well, that, I, that 80s coke hit different. Oh my god, it was legit. That was, was like the the. There was just more fun in the 80s, you know. <laughs> uh, Randy the Macho Man Savage to me, as was without a doubt the the best promo cutter, the best the the best combo of everything. Yeah. Uh, in the ring, his relationship with the with uh, Elizabeth, all that stuff. Oh yeah, I know that was just like the height of like 
what is this? <laughs> like, yeah. let's just do this. Yeah. yeah. No, get a bunch of strong guys. They'll scream. Put them and on people drugs, will maybe show sweaty. up. And now it's like a trillion dollar business. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's nuts. crazy. And legitimate. The biggest stars in the world yeah. want to be associated with WWE. Yeah. Did you, like when you were a kid... Yeah, Is I that, loved it. Yeah, what, yeah, did yeah, you? yeah, yeah. I love the Ultimate Warrior. I I went to some matches because I had a friend um, from school who's like dad worked in the WWE, so WWF. So he would like take us for like birthday parties. That's we would, awesome. we would see wrestling matches. That's we would never go dope. to like the WrestleManias. So sometimes you go to like a a B night. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Be like you know. Yeah. Only like like three hundred people. You're yeah. like, all right, I don't know any of these yeah, wrestlers. Your, guys <laughs> in speedos. <laughs> yeah, your friend's dad had some pull, but not enough pull. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, not, yeah, yeah. It was not enough yeah. pull. But I it was always fun. wondered what that first made was we're like what are we gonna wear and vince was like well everybody should wear speedos Got naturally yeah. yeah as little clothes as possible i wonder when the when the speedo conversation came in oh day one i think so right yeah i think that you, was the pitching point yeah it was like you want we want these guys to look like like gi joe action figures yeah and we want them to break their knees and backs in front of screaming people and then get and they hit, did it yeah and get can you imagine like chairs. i love the rock but could you imagine how he feels when he wakes up every morning just like mm. his body you know, like, and, and he's, he actually is probably not an example because he's so taken care of by like probably multiple doctors, but sort of like any of these wrestlers, you know, like Ric Flair waking up in the morning. Dan, I, I don't just know. think about at your age, not doing anything the day before. I know. How you feel when you wake up in the morning. Yeah. You, you're like, uh, do you make old man noises when you get out of bed? No, I make old noises when I pee. I go, oh, uh, uh, <laughs> By the way, if that's the noise you make when you pee, you might want to go to a doctor. I don't know about you, but uh, I do. I yeah, always, that, that sounds like a medical emergency. I scream, um, I scream, and then I shiver. What disease do I have? Yo, that, all that of is, them. Um, does I'm, it burn? <laughs> no, it doesn't burn. Thank doesn't God. Burn. I used to do an impersonation on stage of an old dude peeing in a urinal next to me, and this is it. Uh, 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 and nothing's come out yet. <laughs> That's just him working up the. Uh, <laughs> what a, uh, my favorite line of that is when you're like, and then it eventually comes out. It just sounds like he's throwing a bunch of coins in the urinal. Yeah, ding 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 ding. <laughs> one of the wor <laughs> one of the my, my, the first impressions I ever did on stage was my impression of signing on to America Online. This was like '99. Uh, America, Amer Amer exactly. America Online was like the first like, AOL. 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 That's what I was gonna guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. signing on to AOL, and I would go. <laughs> I would scream it so loud. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd go, lost connection. <laughs> it was, it's a vintage joke now. It, yeah, I should bring he it has back. an AOL joke I have joke an AOL now. joke in my, in really? my set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It talks about how old people are who yeah, have yeah. AOL. Oh, that's so funny. It's so true. A hundred percent. My mom, my mom, my wife <laughs> uh -oh. still has an AOL. My account. mom. His mom. So, yeah. So has did, an AOL. did you grow up with brothers and sisters? I have one brother, John. Yeah. Older? A younger, but he acts older. Did you... Meaning, was he bigger than you growing up? No, but he just like tells me what's going on. You know, he's just more like, a, like just a little more aggressive than me. And I, yeah, I would like tell him something. He's like, that's wrong. And I'm like, hey, you're in second grade. You know, like, what, what How much you older? How much older? Oh, I'm only three years older, but still, he would just always, he did always you, was like the fact machine. You Did you torture him at all growing yeah, up? Yeah, we, 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 we're we really close now, but we would fight so much when we were younger. Yeah. Is like, I remember a babysitter was coming over one time and we were fighting and the babysitter was like, hi. And my mom's like, stop fighting. And I took a heel of my mom's shoe and I fucking threw it at him like a fucking ninja star and it stuck into his spine. He's like, ah! And he's screaming. Like, like he broke skin? Crying. Like stuck into his spine? No, but like his back cramped up. Like, yeah. And he like, <laughs> oh, he like, he like caught it in like yeah, his shoulder and blades. Fell over and, and everyone's screaming and this babysitter's like, I can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta get out of here. I got to tell you, man, it, do you find it? Okay, because how many kids do you ever know? I have heel. three kids right now, but that's it. I don't plan on getting any more of them. I, that's what everybody says. Do you <laughs> find, because this is one thing I find, I think parenting was easier back then. Yes. Because they, we were unsupervised, which made parenting easier. Oh, I think about like when I, my, when I was my son's age that he is now, which is 11, I remember I used to like walk into the woods with my dad's cigars and smoke them. And I would then come home and be like, mommy, 
I smoked a cigar. And she was like, uh, okay. <laughs> like, that was like, that right. was it. You right? guys, like, imagine if, if my son was like, hey, I, I walked around Sherman Oaks today and, and smoked a cigar. I'd be like, Why were you what? lighting things in the woods by yourself? No, no rules. Do you do you find that? Feral. I've always, I was telling him one of the big difference, I feel like, from when we grew up to when he grew up yeah. also is that besides the unsupervised, which is bananas. Yeah. If you think about how much we were just left alone. Oh, yeah. But- our parents, well, my parents, didn't really police what we did to each other. No, not you at all. You have to do that now. Siblings have to be nice to each other now. Oh, yeah. We had those books on them, you know? Right? <laughs> yeah. But you were allowed to do terrible shit to each other. Oh, yeah. There was no rules. Now there's so many books, so many rules. You're just trying to like, because now we know that like, it's better to, you know, <laughs> to <laughs> not, do this. Not let kids make all the decisions. decisions. Yeah, yeah. And just not let them throw <laughs> fucking heels into their back and not deal with it. But yeah, it's a whole totally different thing. I mean, with my daughter, like if she wants to walk to our neighbor's house, we like like hover behind her just because it's I don't know just it's just that's probably not good too but that just feels well, like what we do now how old were you when you were allowed to leave the house by yourself get on a bike or go to a friend's house like how old do you think you were oh I mean I was riding bikes around my neighborhood when I was like 10 but we Easy. were I was into, really into rollerblading and I was an aggressive rollerblader do you get yes, by the I way was. by the way weird flex but okay <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, what were you I need to know what you what the outfit with the rollerblade outfit Jenko's um, Fuck yeah! yeah and then, I was using jorts, but that's yeah, close enough, big jinkos. Yeah. I had you know big a big Stussy hoodie, and I wore those big knee pads. I was I was I tried to go pro as a rollerblader in like 1996. I got a I got a wheel sponsor and everything. Stop this for I, real! I, I swear to God, I was legit. But then, did you was, have a nickname? <laughs> no, no, you just went straight Jew into just, rollerblading. Just, I was just Jew. I was just Jew <laughs> rollerblader. Yeah, the Jew. Uh, that was the Jew. I, yeah. I, I was the flippy Jew. No, yeah. I, I was just Dan on, on the skates. But yeah, we were like rail sliding half pipes. But what happened was it was like 96, and then rollerblading really took off, and like we could, I couldn't. Did it? For about six, for about six <laughs> months, and then eight dick. <laughs> Did yeah, I? Mean, no, I know. Yeah. No, there was a moment that it was at the X Games. Oh, okay, and okay, okay. Yeah. Once I think. Yeah, there, yeah, it was the X Games once, and it was just people were were realizing, you know, as skateboarders said the whole time, that it's a little bit easier to do tricks on rollerblades than it is on skateboards. Mm -hmm. So that's why skateboarders and rollerbladers were always having the feud. And but yeah. So what happened was what. <laughs> Yeah. There was a yeah. beef between. Yeah, where were you? Just, just like there's right now, like it's not what really a beef. kind of beef. First of all, there was Seattle was like a place that it was happening. Okay, <laughs> but but you beefed like out on the streets. Here's the thing: I can't imagine like a rollerblading gang really causing any kind of. No, it wasn't like uh, no, they fights. Didn't... Yeah, but I was gonna say no. Yeah. It was a little, little bit of that. They, yeah. made sure, they made sure you recycled on the right bit. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. But it was a little bit of just like. The tension. There's a little bit of tension. Got it, got it. So anyway, so I I was doing my thing, but it just sort of took off in a way where people just started doing insane shit. And I and then I, I actually got in an accident where I crashed through a half pipe for real. You went through it? Yeah. It, it was like a um like, When was it built? The Civil War? <laughs> no, like, like our friend made it. Oh, that's why. And like my yeah, friend Manny made this half pipe and he was also fourteen. <laughs> and then I was like, Let me check this fucking thing out. First and I, attempt. And and I flew up and I was like getting into it. We were doing a lot of cool tricks. And I was like, This is fucking awesome. And I remember, thank God I was wearing a helmet. I went up and I crashed headfirst through the half pipe. And I heard Manny on the top look to our friend Jeremy, goes, Shit. I think he's dead. <laughs> that is amazing. And I was just like, I'm not dead, but I'm never doing that again. I'm not dead yet. And, like, that and then is... I never, and then that was it. Then I took the blades off for um, aggressive skating. You know what I think, honestly, also for people over the age of 40, that's what? different from especially the age of the kids you're raising, is that like anybody over the age of 40, because we were unsupervised a lot, could probably think of 10 times in their life where they're like, oh, I should be dead. Right, That's I one shouldn't. Of them for I shouldn't have survived. Oh yeah, that. another rollerblading story. This is turning into rollerblading no, podcast. I, 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 I would like all of them. I was with my buddy Mike, and w there's downtown Stanford. Now it's very built up, but when we were growing up, it, there really was. There was like a Bennigan's and like a library. You know, but there was a post office with tons of stairs. And the whole fun thing of rollerblading was like going down the stairs backwards, all that stuff. As you guys don't know, but now you do. Yeah, of course. So Sp no Mike, spandex. No. By the way, my oldest brother tried to rollerblade for a little bit, and then uh, he's pretty good. Yeah, but then he went from being a really good scooterer to a rollerblading and then tried to skateboard and then fell off it and then 
Lost all his. Confidence. I wish I could skateboard. That's Me one too. of my. Me too. My you could play guitar. My biggest regrets is guitar and skateboarding. But anyways, okay. guitar is one I of my regrets. Anyway, um, yeah. hit me. So we are going with Mike, and his parents don't want him. His parents are a little more strict. My parents were sort of there was really not a lot of rules. We never I never had like a curfew, but that. No, I didn't stay out late. That kind of helped me. I never sort of try to push it. Did your you know? friend? Did anybody have curfews, or was it a more f- like girl? I feel like our like girlfriends did, yeah. and like a few of That's our like you know for us too. Catholic friends had curfews. Yeah. But like for the most part, we could do whatever we want. But we would we would go home. We weren't like nuts. We were right. the same way. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, but Mike's parents like don't go rollerblading downtown. And then after school one day, Mike's like, I want to go rollerblading downtown. There's all the steps. I'm like, yeah, let's go. We start rollerblading. As soon as we step, like start gliding to downtown, I hear, Arr! and Mike got hit by a fucking car. No! <laughs> and this woman gets out and she's like, oh my God. Oh my God. She thought she killed Mike. And he's like, oh, and he gets up and he's like, got like a 15, you know, 15 year old body. So it's pretty good. Yeah. You know, um, and he gets up and he's like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. And she's like, let me get you McDonald's. McDonald's and he's like okay and then she gets to McDonald's and she's not like, a hospital yeah I know and let she's me like, get you a 10 piece nugget and she said she's like thank you so much and we were so young she's like I don't have insurance we don't know what that meant yeah. and we're like okay cool and then we went and then the next day, that is crazy <laughs> then the next day um, Mike is like fucked up and he's like limping and I was like do you tell your mom he's like no I didn't tell them that we're downtown and I was like okay and then then the funniest thing is then years later it's like Mike's like home from college and it's, it's Christmas. They're all drinking his whole family and they're telling great stories. He's like, oh, God. I remember that one time where I got run over by a car rollerblading and it was like, what? <laughs> he was like, oh, yeah, I'm the only one who knows about yeah. that. That is <laughs> amazing. He was so pissed. But that's also, you know, that would never happen today. Oh, never. No. Be- honestly, because if somebody if somebody got hit by a car, there'd be 74 phones out. Oh yeah. Also, could you imagine if if our kids are like, can I go rollerblading downtown? By myself? Like, are you yeah. buying meth? Well, by the way, that's also the only reason it wouldn't happen today is because nobody rollerblades. So, <laughs> so no one's getting hit on rollerblades, anyways. Um, it's probably anything that fucking did bird you scooter. throw snowballs at cars and shit like that? Yeah, I threw snowballs at cars. We we took baseball bats to mailboxes. Yeah, I, threw, I always wanted to do that. I threw stink bombs. I got kicked out of Hebrew school. Why? Because I threw stink bombs in Hebrew school. Where? Where, were you where in the them? school? Where in the school? We, we got him at. We got him at the carnival. No, the stink bombs were the, the best. best. The I best. Had, we, I had those growing up from the ice cream truck. Remember? Uh, yeah, at the, the best. park. Stink yeah. bombs. Love Beeman. Stink love. bombs and smoke bombs. So, but but we took the stink bombs. And we threw them in the hallway right when they rang the bell. And and the, the, all the kids came out. I remember Brooke Gomberg, great Jewish girl, yeah. just goes, <laughs> I'm nauseous. <laughs> and I remember we were getting in trouble. They were like, you can have those stink bombs in Hebrew school. Brooke Gomberg is nauseous. And we're like, we know Brooke. She's probably fine now. <laughs> and then my mom's like, the Hebrew school called. You get those stink bombs. Brooke Gomberg is nauseous. <laughs> I was like, I know, fucking. Well, did, they, did they always first first name last name? Yeah, 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 that. I, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, man. Things like that, like the throwing snowballs at cars, which we did also. The ba- did, now, when you did the baseball bat to the mailbox, was that driving by in the car, or did you get out of the car and and hit it with? The, yeah, that was like a driving by, like yeah, we drive by with yeah. the car. I'm not gonna lie, and it always happened like it was. It just always happened like our mailbox too. I feel like oh yeah, every three months we had to pick it back up. My yeah. dad fucking yeah, so yeah. pissed. I yeah, I always wanted to do that. I will tell you the snowballs at the cars. I, I feel looking back at how stupid that is now as somebody who dr- who drives not smart, but like it. I'm in my own world. If somebody honks at me, it scares the fuck out. Oh yeah. But the snowball, we get ch- you ever get chased? Um, yeah. That was the, sk- and you just scattered, and you just yeah, hope yeah. that you were not the footprints that they decided well, to follow. One of the craziest things connected to the stink bomb is that when the stink bomb happened at Hebrew school, me and my group of friends that did it were, were not allowed to go trick-or-treating that year. And Halloween, like, was incredible, and we were, you know, 12. We couldn't go trick-or-treating, and then that year, these kids... We're throwing it was like a full egg thing like oh, other yeah. kids we knew were going there egging houses and they were egging them so hard that they were shattering windows and those kids got arrested so we always think like thank god we were we definitely would have been with them so because they were like taken to the extreme yeah wait did you not get to go trick-or-treating because the hero school wouldn't let you or your parents wouldn't no let you? that was a punishment that's oh, the only okay. thing they knew, they knew would actually like imagine make the, us upset imagine if the hero school was like hey by the way you guys can't trick-or-treat and we're like you don't like Halloween. halloween's not even jewish yeah. <laughs> what do you mean do you, how you, you know would enforce that when yeah. i was in uh when I was in uh, <laughs> college in Texas, 
I had a roommate's mother say to me about Thanksgiving, I'm so happy to hear that you people celebrate Thanksgiving. And I was like, you know, this isn't a religious, <laughs> this is not a religious holiday. This is like an America. <laughs> Do you bring your matzah? <laughs> This is an America thing. Yeah. Dude, I will tell you that that we got it's bananas. Yeah. We got followed. You know what happened once? Okay, so we used to have a town. This is how crazy different it was. So we had Am the Amherst Fair. And see, we would shave we would shaving cream people, strangers. We yeah. were kids. We'd put shaving cream in our hands and we'd walk up and we'd put it in your face, we'd run away. Oh, I would chase you down. Okay. Hands. Uh, this one dude. Would, and we were 12, dude. Right. Straight up would, gra if he caught you, would grab you and pick you up and slam you on the ground. <laughs> oh, my God. Nobody did anything. No. Yeah, of course not. Nobody yeah. said shit to this guy. Nobody said shit to us. And nobody said shit to him. I feel like there was so much a, uh, for lack of a better term, laws of the playground. Right. Where yeah. once you're out there, if you do something, something might happen to you. Right. And we're going to let that happen. It was like street rules. It really kinda. felt a lot more like that. Like, especially, man, we would get on our bikes and just go somewhere. Okay. And whatever. And what blows me away is that this was, they could, my, our parents couldn't get in touch with us. No, no. There was no way to know. Yeah, if I had a beeper, kidnapped. I think, during my rollerblading phase. Did you? <laughs> Chip, by the way, you yeah, did. I was going to say, that checks out. <laughs> A hundred percent. Yeah, I had all the things that were ridiculous. I, I I check all the. I had I had a beeper. I had a sidekick. I had a sidekick during like the Chelsea days. You know, I'm not for gonna sure. lie. Yeah. That's actually I, I love that because the sidekicks were so before their fucking time. The sidekicks were actually still the best. Form Remember of the ones it was straight side, and then you would go floop. Yeah, and would flip. Yeah, oh, for sure. So before its time, they were like sponsored by Wilmer Valderrama. <laughs> <laughs> Like yes, I don't know what year it was, says. but it was the year of Wilmer Valderrama. Every time I think of a sidekick, that side the the beeper on the Janko jeans feels like is almost the perfect fit. <laughs> it really is. And then the Walkman with the small little the yellow Discman. Yep. Yeah. Were you a good like in school? You were good. You were a good student. Yeah, I mean, I I wasn't I wasn't like the best student, but I was fine. You know, like I would get in trouble for like you know laughing like they were in Spanish class I remember one time we were going through um like yo to LA instead yeah, you yeah, know yeah. and and there was this one kid who went through puberty um like way before us and his name was like Mickey and he had the deepest voice right so he they, everyone went through it you know and he goes yo to and we, I started fucking <laughs> dying and then and then Mike the guy hit by the car starts laughing too and then he was like stop laughing it's not funny and we're like okay and then he's like please continue you make he's like yo do and i was like i can't fucking deal and she's like stop <laughs> laughing and we're like we will stop laughing she's like if you don't stop laughing you're gonna get detention and we're like okay fine so then again yo we start fucking dying right and she's like now now you have to write an essay about why a thousand word essay why, why, why it's not okay to laugh during spanish class and i was like okay she's like do not laugh again and we're like okay Fucking right away. Yo, do we fucking start screaming? Now I'm like hysterical crying. And she pulls us outside of the class. She goes, you are writing a 10,000 word essay about why you cannot laugh during Spanish class. And I was like, fuck. And then that, then that night, I had to write this whole fucking letter, and I think it was like the first comedy in writing Spanish I ever did. In Spanish or English? No, in English. Imagine. But it was like, the year was 1994. That was your first bit. <laughs> yeah, my first bit about poor Mickey. Did hilarious. you, you know, by the way, you've heard this. Our Spanish teacher used to have sex with people in our class. <laughs> Which, by the way, a, that's another thing that doesn't really happen anymore. I, I, well, it does, but people don't brag about it. The teachers get arrested. Oh, yeah, no, but, but <laughs> here's so you know, that's what happens now, is my, you go to jail for being... A pedophile yeah, um, is how true. that's supposed that's to work. That's not how it happened when, as a matter of fact, if you asked my friend today, did that scar you? And he'd be like, it might be the best scar I've got. <laughs> like, he was like, it was such a great memory. And I used to have to drive him over there and she would make me enchiladas and they would go and have sex and then they'd be done having sex. How old were you guys? I could drive. He couldn't. Okay. He so was 16, 15. And how old yeah, was, was she? 30, 30 probably. 32. Oh my God. Did she ever get caught? No. Who wanted to blow a good thing? You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh my God. 
he, he, was, like, he, was, he a, was like, don't tell anybody. I'm like, free enchiladas? Yeah, Who am I telling? <laughs> this is the best food I've ever had. You, you got know? enchiladas and he got tacos. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, it it so worked funny. out well. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely a thing for sure. I remember, yeah, that was different always, time, always, though. Different time, yeah. Different yeah. time for sure. And my, that same Spanish teacher um, who made me write the essay, she ended up like, getting cheated on by her husband and leaving and he left her family and she would just talk about all the time. And then I also would laugh. Yeah. (laughs) But, but, but like when you, the way you guys used to talk to each other, right? right? The way we used to tease each other. Yeah. I feel like it's, it's such a no, no now, but I feel like we need to find a middle ground because a, a fucking with people used to be part of the vernacular. Right. And and not in a negative way. Right. It's it's that that is gone. Well, the way that is long gone. Well, yeah, I mean the the biggest problem now is I was someone was telling me yesterday the the thing called micro boredom where like that's now what, what that? micro boredom is when you are a kid today and you're watching TV and then the TV is over and then or is a commercial and during the commercial you grab your iPad you know, and it's like it used to be like OK to be like bored because being bored, you would walk around, you'd go smoke cigars in the woods, you know, you do stuff. So and now I feel like the iPad and all this stuff and I, we're, we're, we all do it. So I'm not saying that I yeah. don't do it, but it's just that that definitely is not helping with it, because now not only are we like making sure our kids don't do anything, they also are so doing all these things all the time that we don't even doesn't even matter. You yeah. know, did, did you guys in high school well you were bullied a little bit in high school a little bit yeah that's an understatement you were bullied in high school but but it's why so were fun. you bullied uh i was bullied in middle school because uh middle school first uh i grew my hair out like way longer than this my my mother's my mom's mom was diagnosed with cancer for the third time so i grew my hair out to donate to locks of love so i got picked on for looking like a girl because as you can also see i'm not the biggest person of all time right um so legit from if you saw me from the back, I looked like a girl. And so I got picked on for that. Uh, I got picked on for being too skinny in high school. I just got picked on for I don't know. Just, I, I really couldn't figure out I, why I got picked on in high school. Truthfully, I, from from the point of view of somebody who was not somebody who picked on people in high school, but as a younger brother and somebody who observed a lot of it, you're a scent. And I don't mean this in a bad way. You're a dude who's in touch with his emotions. You've always been a sensitive kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. And so there's a certain group of guys at that age, they're going to smell that blood in the water. Yeah, that, that was like me in high school too. It's like I always had my great like core group of friends from yeah. like musical theater and like curtain call which was like this improv class and like my my oh, my yes. comedy like i was doing improv since i'm yeah. nine so i had this like very sort of like group of like kind of like th- you would call them like theater kids you know but we were like yeah, tight yeah. but i was also friends with all girls you know like i always was friends with so many girls and and you know there you go i'm cool but so but, but you must have got picked on a little bit yeah so it. i got picked on because basically like all the popular girls like i was friends with them yeah you know and i even even my high school girl girlfriend was like a cheerleader and then it was like all these like jocks were like they didn't like that I was sort of like in their space or friends with all the girls they like and I remember there was one party I went to with this with this kid Mark who like was they all all these girls I was friends with all played hockey and then I didn't play hockey but I was just friends with them and all the guys who played hockey with these girls were like fucking like serious like east coast like jocks and they hated that they like liked me and thought I was funny and there was a party where they pushed me down the stairs and Come I was on, dude. so fucking. How old were you? I was like 13 and Jesus. I got pushed down stairs at this party. And I was, it came home. I was so mad. And I, yeah, could, dude. I was yeah, but then guess what? You got sympathy from the girls the next day. Like that yeah. was the thing. It's a, it's a jealousy thing. They were like, well, maybe if we show that he like we beat him up, that he's a pussy, that the girls won't like him. But the next day instead. They were still your friends and were like, oh, you guys are assholes. And hey, are you OK? Like, right. was that, so yeah, and then, then it, was that, a, it was a lose win for you. You were like, I got pushed down some stairs, but. I'm still friends with the Bobby. Yeah, and girls. I'm still friends with those girls. Yeah. And they're not and, and and those guys are fucking just like all Pumping gas. Pe- peaked in high school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Truly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Truly. <For sure. laughs> I, I it's interesting, man. I part of me is like there's gotta be a balance because to me there's something there was something not good about the bad things that happened to you, but good because you figure out 
how to get over them or how to move past them. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's a skill set that is important, man. Yeah. To be able to solve problems by yourself and to be like, that was a terrible thing that happened to me. Yeah. And just sort of having to deal with that and just having like push through and deal with like rejection yes, early on. Yeah. Like it just sort of that kind of stuff has just been, and especially what we do, it's like, that's such a part of it. So to like start to sort of grow that skin, you know, early on, I didn't know I was doing it, but you know, then you, you know, then you come out of it and you're like, okay, I feel like I could just like take on anything a we little bit. We don't do that as much for our kids anymore. We solve. Yeah. I found myself with him at one point, my dad said to me, you got to stop solving his problems because and eventually he's going to have to solve his problems. Yeah. You have to stop solving his problems. Even if you watch him go through some terrible stuff mm. at 12, how terrible could it be? But you need to let him fall down you need to not solve the if yeah. he's on the playground and he comes up and goes this kid is this you ha at some point have to say go figure it out yeah. yeah like my son's at sleepaway camp right now and he hated the first week and he's like he loves writing like scripts and he like has a movie Does podcast he really? yeah, he's got a movie wait, podcast how old is he? he's 11 wait i think i've seen his movie podcast <laughs> yes, or wait, clips of it wait, on here abe loves movies yes he, he, i'm gonna need yeah this. He, he loves it and uh and and Rachel like loves your podcast so much. She's like, you need to do this with Abe. And I was like, well, he's 11. It's not the same yeah. sort of vibe yet, <laughs> but we'll get there eventually. Yeah. But, but he was like, I can't wait to go to, and he's going to the East Coast sleepaway camp. He's like, can't wait to get there and tell everyone about my screenplays and, uh, and, and my podcast. And I was like, why don't you just start with like, I love LeBron James. Yeah, like, it's a good spot. Like an icebreaker. Yeah. yeah. So, but the first week he was there, he wanted to come home. He's freaking out. And the camp called us and like, he's so upset. And then Rachel was like, we should go get him. And I was like, we can't get, we can not get him. We're not, it's not a rescue mission they're not calling us saying he's like dying, dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's just like having a hard time adjusting and now you know he loved he'd end up loving it but i think it was just that hard transition but I, I you know our instinct as these sort of parents in 2024 is to fucking fly to the poconos with a helicopter and get him out and bring him back to la yeah, where well, he's but, cozy and comfy and yeah, you know you just though instilled a huge bit of confidence in him that he now realizes he can get through that if he feels alone or he feels like a little scared he now has enough confidence in himself as abe to be like oh i can get through this mm -hmm. if you had gone and, and got him that would have happened every time until yeah. like it's such a smart move man because you it's hard sometimes what i realized the hardest decisions hard for me because it causes i i see them in pain but at the end of the day coming out of it definitely best move yeah do you know what i mean yeah yeah i, I think it's really good for him but but it, it's it's hard to fight that sort of like Without parental it. instinct that we have now as parents it's like your kid thing. you want to do everything you can for your kid when i was getting heavily bullied in high school i remember like beat uh, up or just no, like no, no it, friends uh, well there was one time on the football team on the i was on the football team my my sophomore year and we were all at the water trough and it was pads and there was a dude on the team who ended up being a psychotic person joined the Marines. Shocker. And uh, he, I was... But whether we need them on that wall. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. That's what we need on that wall. And I have yeah. my back to the field. I'm getting some water. And all of a sudden, I feel somebody hit me. And I go straight into a fence and my heels touch my head. Oh, God. And I was like, I like thinking back on it, I for sure could have been paralyzed. A hundred percent. Like, it could have been really bad. And I got up and he's, it's this dude and he takes his helmet off. And I'm not going to say his name because it's not even worth it. And he was like, oh, my bad. I tripped. And I I legit, like, I threw my helmet at him. And we went face to face. He was a way bigger kid than me, way stronger. And I was just like, it was the first time I really kind of, like, stepped up. And they had to separate us and whatnot. But, like, that was the only time I really physically got hit. All the other times, I just got, like, I just got verbally beat the fuck up every day in the locker room. Um, at, uh, at the school you told me you went to the high school was, it, was at, that the first school before at, you transferred at, at Notre Dame okay, Notre yeah. Dame got verbally beat up um, just by at least you were paying for it that's right <laughs> yep that's right that's yep. right yep <laughs> verbally beat up um, by everybody by kids I grew up with like kids I went to Carpenter with uh -huh. kids I went to middle school with eventually were on sports teams and were friends with the kids that were picking on me but didn't want to show that they were friends with me because they were surviving for themselves so some just kind of laughed and, and stuck off it and they would still talk to me one on one and others eventually joined in on it. And it just like I saw kids that I had known since I was four go from somebody I knew to a complete stranger. And right. it was like it was it was hard. Um, and, and one your year dad being on Chelsea lately didn't help. 
Well, it helped for a little bit. It helped once my freshman year. I actually, I asked to go to homecoming my freshman year. Okay. On TV. Wait, wait, wait. You, oh, okay. You just yeah. spoiled it. Damn it. Oh, sorry. I asked, her, I asked her once and she told me I needed to be more creative. And I told him that. Can you believe that, that shit? Oh and I my told him God. that. And then he told Chelsea that. And Chelsea brought me on after a show and was like, hey, so Jacob's here because uh, he has, you know, he has something to ask a girl who told him to pretty much do it better. Jacob, what do you have to say? And I asked her again. And what I didn't know is that she made me get more creative because she already had a date. And so I took this this date from another dude. He ended up, by the way, he ended up he ended up hating me for the rest of the time that yeah, I was there. I get it. Don't yeah. blame him, by the way. My bad. My bad. Didn't know. Was the she on the show with you? Nope. Oh, that's. But I had to, I was telling everybody like, hey, tune in to Chelsea tonight, and so the whole school. I was a freshman, freshman, sophomore, juniors, seniors oh, were awesome. like, yo, that was dope. I had a little bit of clout for a little bit, for like maybe a couple months, and then I was I went from fucking hero to zero real quick again. It I remember, nuts. dude. I was in the uh, in Chelsea late the office when I was writing on that when it was at the old studio yeah. over on Olympia. Olympic? Olympic, Olympic yeah. yeah, I think so. And I walked into so sit- far to get there. Oh my god, the most traffic, oh, the worst, the worst, one of the worst I, studios <laughs> ever. ever. I remember, oh my god, walking into Sarah Colonna's office one morning and sitting down and shutting the door, and just started weeping because he had been telling me about how much he'd been being bullied, and I had been talking to Beth about it, and she was like, "We well, got to go in there." I said, "We're gonna make it worse for him." If we go in and the teacher tells these dudes, I know these dudes because I grew up with these dudes. Yeah. And as soon as the teacher tells you that the parents came in, it's going to be worse. 100%. But at, but at the same time, you don't want to sit back and do nothing. It's right. like a real. It's a double-edged sword. It's, it's a it's real. Rough. And I remember just sitting in there because I was dropping him off the, that morning and he was like, I don't want to go to school today. And I could just see it. He was just mentally just beat up. And your instinct as a parent is to be like, I gotta, I gotta fix this. Yeah. I gotta solve this. Yeah. And I, but I knew I am gonna I'm gonna call my dad. He was like, look, you gotta let him, you gotta let him figure it out. We ended up pulling him out of Notre Dame. Yeah. Which was one of the hardest. Sometimes you make a decision, you know, you know this as a parent. Here's I used to have some issues with my parents until I became a parent. And I was like, oh, you didn't know what the fuck you were doing either. Yeah. You had no idea. So it was, was it based on the bullying, bullying years? So you gotta it, get it out was of bullying because yes. it was really affecting my grades. Like I just wasn't doing well in school because when I was in school, I was just trying to make it through the to day. Survive. Especially like I only played football one year. I didn't play again for obvious reasons. Um, I tried out for basketball and baseball my freshman year. I went over. Th- I went one for four on sports teams my freshman year, and I only made the track team because they literally let. They, everybody makes the track team. Right. I had kids making memes about me. I had, I had the. You said you dated the popular girls. I had the popular girls picking on me, like it was, it was, rough. It was all the way around. Like they would make making memes about you. It, I'm, honestly, it looking, looking back at this one, it's pretty funny. I'm not gonna lie, and I'm gonna, I'll just paint the picture. It was a profile picture of me back when Facebook was still popular, or the only thing. It's not popular anymore. Sorry. Okay. I, I was, and <laughs> that I was. Explains a it lot. Was just a pic- <laughs> it was just a picture of me. Is that why I'm not selling out the funny bone? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. The picture of me and the caption above it or right above me, it said, oh, you, um, you do, you run track and field. What event do you do? And under me, it just said warmups. And by the way, looking back on it now, super funny, like, like really funny actually. And I love it. But some random number had sent it to me and I was like, wait, who is this? And every time I responded, they would just resend the picture. And then every, like, every, I don't know if I told you this, but like for about a month, like every other day, I would get the same text sent from me, but by a different phone number. Mm. So it was a group of kids. They were just like, all right, it's your turn. All right, it's your turn. And they would just over and over and over for about so a month, every up. other day, send that only that picture. They never did anything different. It was just that one, but it got a huge reaction out of me every time. Cause I was like, man, fuck. Like no, you never told me that. No, I didn't. And so like, it just like. It got it got to be a point where it was like it was really affecting my mental. It was affecting my grades. It was if a, you had told me that, I would have done something. I would have gathered all the numbers. I'd have brought them into the yep. the dude running it. I'd have said, "Get me all the the kids and their parents." The, because if the, it's one thing if you feel like there's just a dude or two bullying you, no, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It's another thing if you feel like not only do you not know who it is, 
But there's a, so you're walking down the hallway. It could be all these people, yeah, right. which has got to make you feel terrible and a little unsafe in your school. I, 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 I never felt like I was going to get the shit beaten out of me. Like that, that's not but my generation. That's generations. not what I meant by unsafe, dude. No, like, no yeah, I yeah. just, I, I didn't know who I could talk to. That's unsafe. I had, I had that. I did have a core friend group. I think everybody, at least, at least I hope to think that everybody in high school has a core friend group of at least like right. four or five people. Yeah, yeah. I had a really good core friend group. You did. My freshman and sophomore year, um, and but but dude, we pulled him out of Notre Dame was where this is one of them. When I say as a parent, sometimes you got to make decisions where you're just like, I. Th- I hope this is the right one. Right. If not, we'll be talking about it on a couch <laughs> at some point in time. Yeah, yeah. But we pulled him out of, and he had worked forever to go. Always, was, I want to go to Notre Dame. I want to go to Notre Dame. It was my go. dream school. And a midway through that sophomore year, Beth and I were like, yeah, "No, we're, junior year." So did junior? you want to leave? Did you want to leave? No, no. He he actually they when he, he told me they were pulling me out. I was pissed, but he was like, "All right, but these are your options." And I was like, "Hold on, if you're making the decision to pull me out of the school when I don't want to leave." I get to pick where I get to go. And and I, the only thought I had in my mind was champs because that's where you all know where that is. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. In the Valley it was a charter school it's at the time. It, it is school. still a charter school. Still yeah. a charter school. Yeah. And uh, I, the reason I chose champs is because everybody I went to middle school with in Milliken all chose either uh, champs or Loxa was the other one. Yeah. Loxa is a good school too. And so, downtown. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, just from, for a parent, yeah. go champs, not Loxa. I'll tell you why off the podcast okay um he's not gonna have to worry about that <laughs> <laughs> i think he's i think he's got the schools mapped out yeah yeah i think we're good um, um, well, he, well, he, we, we, we talked about it earlier he said he he said he his kids want to go to champs like that's why we we're is talking that right about. yeah yeah that's why that's why i'm saying champs why? over loxa yeah they are they're already talking about champs can i tell you a great experience yeah, yeah. Because, I, it's already, because of the performing arts stuff yeah and also truthfully like good kids it was a good, good kids and truthfully, the teachers. Like you, I look back and I think about like at, at certain schools and certain grades. You're like there are certain teachers that really stick out. My junior second semester junior year, I had seven classes. Five out of seven teachers loved. My senior year, same thing. Five out of seven. There are specific teachers and specific moments that I I credit a lot to for helping me break out of the shell a little bit when I was like 17, 18. Like that school did more for me than I thought. And also, you know, when you go to I'm going to high school, it's I grew it. up as an athlete. I played four sports year round. Like going into high school, I was like, you know, I don't know if you wanted this or you you too, but like I wanted to be the guy. You know what I mean? Right. Like when you see it on TV, it's like, dude, he plays three sports. He's homecoming king. All the girls like him. He's respected all the way around. Like not everybody wants to fuck him, but everybody just knows him and likes him. Do you know what I mean? Right. I never got the chance, even like could never step foot into following that role at Notre Dame because it just, I, it was just never there. At Champs, I actually got to be the guy for the year and a half that I was there. That's cool. And it was dope. I they, it was a performing arts school, so walking on to varsity basketball isn't that impressive because they had they played it was if it, I had to there was a the, lot of guys doing this on the court yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was me yeah there was yeah. there hey when you're a jet you're a jet yeah, yeah. That, that guy yeah and uh we uh but dude he didn't talk to look after the move after we made him switch schools he didn't talk and this was maybe the first time ever he didn't talk to us for two weeks two weeks I he was co- mad man I would come home from school I would go into my room I would and we just homework. had to, we, and Beth and I would just look at each other yep. like, man, I hope we made the right decision and we didn't. That's the crazy thing. This is why if I ever had a problem with my parents, as soon as I started to become a parent, it was over because right. you realize. Did your other kids have issues like this too? Um, yeah, a little bit. My uh, oldest son, he did. He lived, he did most of his high school in Seattle, right? Yeah. All of his high school in Seattle. Um, but this one, like. For it, my daughter didn't really get bullied um, during school, and tr- my oldest son was um, he kind of kept it. Both, tombs- both Caitlin and Trevor really kept to their respective groups. Yeah, they never really branched out. They were both, uh, I mean, all all three of us, but my brother and sister especially were in that like emo group in school. Right, hundred percent. So. My sister, when she was in eighth grade, I was in sixth grade. And so I got one year with her uh, in middle school. And I actually was kind of like adopted into her eighth grade friend group of all the emo girls. Oh, dude, mm-hmm. I got pictures of you in that emo phase. Oh, dude. I can't wait to break them out. Lo- with love- the 
with the bangs. Bang. I had that too. I went through that look also. You did? Yeah. Like, well, how do you go with the? Did you flat iron your Jewy hair? Uh, wait. Where's do you my, have a picture? Let me get a picture. Hold go, on. Oh Hold on. my god. Yeah, that's amazing. This is gonna be amazing. I love that. I love that. You, I remember we flat ironed your hair, dude. And you okay? Yeah, yeah. I just got a little. It was a little stuffy this morning. Okay. I'm good. Um, we flat ironed your emo hair. Oh, I gotta find it. He went to go pay did the meter. Did you by the way. have a? Have you ever been in the uh, in a stage like I know you didn't in rollerblading or where you had like a different like a like emo Dan or did you have a little name or? I didn't have a name. Hold on, I, I, I what were you listening to? Because we're gonna go see My Chemical Romance in October. You know I don't I don't like them. I was listening to Dashboard Confessional a lot. Like saves the day. By the way, I'm not gonna lie. I checked out after you said you don't like My Chemical Romance. <laughs> <laughs> that that by the way to my generation and to me that is. One of the most disrespectful things you could say. I wait. I gotta. I'm okay. trying to find this. That's why I tell you we went to feed the meter. That is you for sure, Drake Bell. <laughs> Thank you. I was just gonna say that. Can you hold that up to the camera? I was just gonna say. Okay, why? Well, why no, do you look exactly like, like Drake, Drake Bell? A hundred percent. This was. This was not. This was not flat iron, but I. But I. It was blow dried. But there was a show I did. Um, with uh, Justin Wilman in St. Louis, and he had a flat iron because he was flat ironing his curly Jew hair. So then I flat ironed mine. There's this picture. I, I'll find that and send it so you guys see it. There's a picture you of us in St. Louis. Double flat iron. I was like, I look like my chemical ram romance. I like them, but I don't love them. Like I, my favorite music is like pop punk. So I'm I'm like No FX, Rancid, Green Day, Blink One Eight Two. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Green Day, Offspring, Lord for Operation Ivy. Like that's what I listen to still all, all the time. Did you start? <laughs> Your stand up in high school? Is that what you're saying? You yeah, I mean, writing? I was starting, I was doing like sketch comedy and all that kind of stuff when I was like 15, like even at the comedy clubs. And then when I was in Boston at 18 is when I really started like stand up, like, you know, five nights a week. Do you remember your first either sketch or wow, how old were you when you started five nights a week stand up? Like 18. 18. God damn. Yeah, but here's the thing. I, Cause you remember the first time I got on stage, I was 15. But there was, here's one thing that happened for, again, for people over the age of 40, we were given freedom and independence at a young age. Yeah. So we had confidence to go out and do that shit at oh, yeah. 18. Yeah. Especially in Boston, like at Dick Dory's Comedy Vault, it was like, I was with like a lot of- Who was doing stand-up in Boston at the time? Well, Gary Goldman just like was the big, he he just like did the Tonight Show, so he like made it, and he was going to move to LA. Yeah. And he was the nicest the nicest guy to me. Eugene Merman was also like very popular at, at the time in Boston. Yeah. Um, I started with Dan Mintz, like we were the same open mic. No shit. Yeah, yeah. And um, who were that? Was Lenny Clark still hanging around? Lenny Boston Clark at the time? was still hanging out there. Um, that guy. Also, uh, Don Gavin was there. Yeah, dude. Um, uh, of course. Um, was Stephen Wright walking around? No, Stephen Wright wasn't walking around. Um, Tim McIntyre was at the comedy studio. Um, I mean, like, yeah, all, all those guys were there. Um, I, I, I did. Robbie Prince had a Tuesday night at the Comedy Connection. I did that show. <laughs> Um, all, all, all those guys and like, you know, like Bob Marley would come in and do his weekends and it was, it was, I mean, it was awesome, but those guys were like Boston guys, you know, yeah. and I would go and I was like 18 in like a full Adidas jumpsuit like coming from Emerson. You must've looked so young, dude. I was so young. And I remember because I had a friend who was a writer who was represented by the manager, Barry Katz. Oh, yeah. So I met Barry Katz. And I and he was like, if you ever need advice in Do comedy, the Barry Katz voice. Like, if you ever need advice in comedy, <laughs> give me a call. I'm telling you. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So I called him one time from my dorm room, and I was like, hey, Barry, I have a question. He's like, yeah, what's going on? And I was like, I was like, you know, uh, I, I'm feeling like these older comedians. Uh, I didn't say that, but I was like, these other comics in Boston that they don't like like really like are that they're not being that, that nice to me you know i was so so naive and i was like i, I was like yeah they, he's like yeah they they don't like you <laughs> <laughs> and i was like okay and he goes so here's what you gotta do go into dick darty's comedy vault kill and leave and i was like okay and i and i did that and because of that advice like it was 
it was good, but also I never got in with a lot of those guys, mm-hmm. you know, because I would just perform and I'd kill or I tried to kill. I eventually was killing and then and then I'd leave. So I really was just kind of hanging with like my Emerson friends and then Dan Mintz because he was also so like the open micers, this guy Dan Newbauer was super funny. Um, and we like would hang out the new guys. Larry Lewis was there. Um, at the Howard Johnson's, he had a he had like a, a Dude, Thursday the night the hojos. Um, but but I would just perform and leave, you know, and that was sort of what what I did for a long time in Boston. Can you think of like some things when you were growing up, like even with your brother, that you guys did that you can't you can't believe your either your parents let you do or that you did that you would never let your kids do now? Oh, I mean, I think. The w- w- one of the the craziest things we did was that that I got really injured was we during the first snowstorm of the year, like in ninety four. We basically had winter break. We came back on Monday, and then Tuesday it was snowstorm. So we're like, we got to go fucking sledding. So we we get out, we get outside, and I was like, we got to take the boogie boards sledding. We got a snowboard because snowboarding was so big that I was like, guys, we could take a, these boogie boards and we could be professional snowboarders. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and my brother was like, OK. And my friend Jeremy's like, cool. So we pick up like our neighborhood. What kind we, of hill are we talking about? A pretty big hill, but yeah. it was like on someone's house. But we didn't like we didn't like ask them. Like right. now I feel like, like, can I use your your, your street for we a second? Uh, I'm no. thinking about this. The boogie board on the bottom like that is so slick. Yeah, like, well. You'll hear with the story yeah, no, goes. I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I, so so I, I, we grab the boogie board. We go to the top of this hill. It really wasn't that big of a hill, but it was like not a sledding hill. It was like rocks and different things. So I was like, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> well, our parents were not with us. We are, How? you know, my, my brother is eight. I think I'm 11. And we are just like with like we're down the street, you know, the very far crazy blizzard. When you leave the house. What do you say to the parents? Hey, see you, well, we'll see you for mac see, and cheese in yeah, seven hours. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll be back for dinner. When the and lights my come dad up. told me that what he did in the snowstorm during this time is he went to my friend's dad's house and they were just smoking weed in the fucking snowstorm and they were getting high as fuck. So my dad is now, it's like 11 a.m. My dad is high as fuck. Me and my friends are on the top of this hill. Your dad sounds I, cool. I, he's very cool. I, I, get on the, I get on the boogie board. I go down, immediately fucking fly off, crash into a rock, rock slice my knee open. Open. I feel I still remember the sensation where I laid on the ground and I just felt warm like my entire leg was warm and I started screaming there's blood everywhere I was like ah so my friends run to find my 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 dad he's high so he ah! so he's like <laughs> coming with his friend Jimmy and they're all fucking high and I can't move and they have to it's so funny thinking of like these two like high guys they're picking a bleeding kid up they put me in the car I go to the emergency room I need 50 stitches whoa get the fuck out of here it gets crazy I got 50 stitches in my uh, uh, on my knee had like staples and then I you know had did some physical therapy and uh you know it was it felt like it was going to be okay I went to sc- went back to school like um two weeks later and I'm in math class and the bell rings and I go to stand up and my knee is locked and I was like why can't I get up and then I like touched my knee and it was so warm and then they had to get a wheelchair and like take me to like the, the nurse. The nurse calls my dad. He shows up again, probably high, high. again. Yeah. <laughs> he comes in <laughs> and they're like, well, you should go to your doctor. So go to the doctor and looks, my, my knee is now sort of like a balloon. giant, yeah. giant, giant. And the doctor goes, okay, let's uh, just, we're going to take a little, uh, I'm going to pull some fluid to see what's going on in your knee. And I remember it's gross, but he went to pull like the fluid. And I remember seeing an entire like syringe just yellow. And I was like, that can't be good. That's yeah. not good. That's and not then, blood. And then um, he's like, I talked to you, told my dad. And then my dad comes back in and he goes, um, you're having surgery in a half hour. And then I got rushed to the hospital. I had like surgery. I had an orthoscopic surgery and ended up that I had a staph infection. Yeah. And like it was pretty fucking serious. I got a staph infection. I had then I had a tube in my like draining my leg and I was on an IV drip. I didn't go to the rest of middle school. Like I didn't go back to school to the spring because I was yeah. basically on in bed home at 11 at, ele- at 11. Yeah. I was uh, turning 12 and I just sat there uh, with an IV and my dad was working was like he was unemployed then. So he was like the, the home nurse, which, as you know, from the earlier story, he was high. Uh, yeah. So he was <laughs> probably taking your IV. And, yeah. And there was one time where he was doing it and he was definitely doing it wrong and I was like dad he's like yeah I was like there's blood coming out of my chest 
<laughs> and and then, but it, but it was kind of fun because I just like I really just like sat around. I was like had like you know. They, they gave me like a school tutor, you know, like a homeschool tutor yeah, yeah, from the yeah. school that would come and I would just like work for like two hours and I'd watch like Jerry Springer. <laughs> How often do you think I was high when you were growing up? <laughs> well, based on the facts that I know now, you <laughs> no, based on the popular podcast. <laughs> No, I mean that actually not in the bad. You said you didn't really start smoking until I was in high school again. Uh, I and here's the deal. I actually, when I was single with them, I quit smoking. Yeah, and not when because, I first met you, you were single. I remember the first time I met you. By yes. the way, I, we should have said the being a podcast. I remember I met you at the comedy store in like 2003. You had your hat backwards, and you were talking about your kids and how you were making the sandwiches. Yeah, peanut butter and, 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 and sandwiches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PBJ, and um, how that was like a business, and how you you did your one man show at Aspen, and you got a development deal, and that yeah. was like our first conversation. Can I tell you something at about the steps the, of the comedy store? Can I tell you something about the PBJ? That's right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So the PB and J thing. Um, so twenty one years I've known you. That's crazy. It's crazy. It's the crazy. P the PB and J thing. My favorite part about that is he used to like like tear a couple holes in my shirt and put a little dirt on my face. So when I walked up there, so I would get a couple <laughs> couple extra bucks. They got better tips than I did, my kids. So I would make sure the clothes were dirty and yeah, tattered. It's, like, it's like it's like one of the greatest stories of all time. It's amazing. But, but you know. <sighs> I forget what I was talking about. What was Me I too. About getting high. Sorry, I oh, interrupted. Oh, you. Yeah. see that? That's, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> Drugs. I, I um, I didn't when I was single. It's not that I didn't think I could parent a little high, but if shit went down and I was high. I would have never forgiven myself. Right. Do you know? Do you know yeah, it, yeah. It, also for me, I, I can't smoke weed anymore. I smoked a lot of weed in, in middle school and high school and in college, but, and then I never even really drank in college. I just like was always just was always smoke weed. And then I got, then one day I remember, I think I was like 28. So it's coming for you. And I remember I was in like in my apartment and I looked at the time and it was like 1103 or something. And I remember this and I just started going like, why is the day ending? <laughs> and then I got so fucking paranoid. <laughs> and then I just started freaking out. And then I was like, I got to go to sleep. And then I woke up and smoked the next day and got more paranoid. And I was like, I can't smoke weed. And then I, so really since then I, I I've like, I, I love like marijuana. I love the smell of it. I love sort of like, best. like, you know, I love buying it. I love rolling. I love hanging out, but I can't, I still can't really get high earlier this year. We were we we tried to do like a bunch of edibles just to kind of like because it's fun mm -hmm. and it was it, and it was it was good but then like towards the end also like it got a little paranoid again so I need to find the right balance. I I think I had right off the top of my head. So I'm gonna take a guess that the edibles you were taking were just straight THC. There's no CBD in it. Yeah, you should get some edibles that are like. My my girlfriend has some. Camino makes them. They're all over LA. Um, it's like. It's it's two milligrams of THC and six milligrams of CBD. Okay. So it's like a three to one almost. So okay. it, it, you still get that euphoric feeling, but you have that CBD Bounce. that kind of cancels you out a little bit, yeah, more yeah. evens you out. Your my mom, my mom, the same way. That's the only thing she can use. Yeah, that's true. Your kids are starting to get like. Have you started to think about that? Like how you're gonna address that those kind of conversations? A little bit kids? only because it's so different now. Like Very when, when different. I grew up, like it was funny when I grew up. Like we all knew like all of our parents were like doing drugs like they were grew up in the 80s it, they were they were they were they were young 20s 30s in the not 80s i was gonna say now my but my, my parents were like you know like in the fuck my dad our neighbor was a famous a big drug dealer in like who would like ru running cash from like the clubs in new york city they had nice. these crazy stories i even even have heard cool. all their stories but yeah they have some so they were having a lot of fun and weed was around and i remember the smell of weed when i first smelled weed i was like oh this is my dad's bedroom. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I was aware of it, even though <laughs> it feels, smells so familiar. Yeah. Even though I knew it was like, you know, don't do drugs. I knew I was in my house, but now they don't really, they, they don't really do that. We talked about it earlier. Yeah. About it's still, it's still middle school kids doing weed is still bad, obviously, yes. but it's just like we drive past all the weed shops all the time. Yeah, so I don't, we don't know what to tell them where it's like, it's medical marijuana. We call, we call it medical marijuana. Um, but I don't know like what to say. I haven't, we, we, we've now, we've done like the sex talk, which my parents didn't even do. You have? At 11? Yeah. Well, there's books. Yeah. Cause they, they, they had the sex talk principal Martinez at the end of uh fifth grade. They, so we, what's the sex what? talk? Tell me what it is. Well, there's a book. Let's role play. I'll be your kid. <laughs> No, it's, it's there's there, there's there's a book that explains everything, oh. you know, how you get pregnant by 
by having sex. Yeah, I didn't have that talking about and, the um, and it's just it's just very sort of ex- explained. It's like you the the penis goes in the vagina, and that's how you the sperm goes to the egg, and that's how a baby is made. That's how babies are made is through sex, right? And that is what sex is. Some people do it to not have the baby, but that is how the baby is made. And that's no, that's the quick one. That's the quick one. Yeah, I don't yeah. have. Yeah, and then but the book is longer. And then, you know, gonna, he, yeah, that'd be a short. Book. Yeah, but but he yeah, thinks it's funny. Point. And it's just, you know, it goes, it goes it just really lays it out. There's not the sex talk hasn't changed. It's Did weird. your parents have sex? No, sex? no, never. Yeah, my never, parents ever. Ne- one I really time, think- one right. time I like, actually, this is the rollerblading podcast. One time I rollerbladed <laughs> to meet this girl in the middle of the night. Get you went booty call on rollerblades oh, blade, yeah. and still did you still get vagina? I don't think it was vagina, but we were making out. Oh, okay, all right, so, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so I was gonna say based on that, it sounded like she was a heat. But uh, <laughs> do you keep the rollerblades on when you're making out? Yeah, they were on. Yeah, 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 it was pretty cool. I love that. And then I remember I got a hickey, and then I had a hickey for the first time. My mom saw it, and the only time she ever talked about it, she looked at me. She goes. Don't hang out with fast girls. She didn't even blame it on me. She, she blamed on them people. fast girls. <laughs> yeah. Like it was the 50s. Yeah. And like it was like, yeah. like that's like so my mom did. It's nothing to do with me. It's like, don't hang out with the sluts. Yeah. Stay away from the sluts. Like the Thunderbirds and the pink <laughs> yeah. ladies. Yeah. Uh, anyways. Dude, I, Sorry, I, I, I never off. had a no, no, sex talk with him. No, you know why? Because I've had porn in my pocket since I was 14. Really? Have you been looking? Did you look at porn when you were 14? No. That's 14, the hardest part. 13. That, 12, that's that's 12, the conversation 11. I have to have with him. Yeah. Like when he comes back, because that's the next conversation, which is like because he's been away with just a lot of other young dudes. Yeah. Yeah. I know. And some of those young dudes have 18 year old brothers. I know. And I, I have a friend who's in such denial. Yeah. My friend Danielle is like, well, they, they don't know about porn yet. He doesn't know. And I was like, they, they do. Everything. Yeah. Everyone, like I used to go. My, my, my friend John's dad, who like had a gun room, he also had a porn room. We would go in there and we'd like flip through the pictures. And I, we were like ten. You there was magazines. Like you were, so in the now woods. it's everywhere. But the, but the problem is, there's so much fucking porn and yeah. so intense that I just need to explain to him that this is not real sex. Right. That's the problem. By the way, when you tell me about your friend's parents, his friend's parents sound way cooler than yours. <laughs> yeah. A yeah, porn room and a gun room? This yeah, dude, yeah, that yeah, dude's yeah, yeah. separate, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to mix the two. Yeah, it's my friend's dad. <laughs> Anytime there's like a mass shooting, he's always, he always texts me, it's the, it's 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 not the guns. I'm like, okay, okay. It's not it's me. the porn room. <laughs> I was like, so I, just stay in your porn room. What, what, like, what do you feel like, because you have three kids. How old again? Uh, the 11, 9, and 2. Oh. Do you big feel difference like... Big difference, yeah. Already, because 11 and 2... Their growing up experience, even because today's childhood experience has changed so quickly. Oh, yeah. And is it already different raising a two year old now than it was? Yeah. Well, also with this book, The Anxious Generation, I don't know if you know about it or no. read about What's it. It's it about The Anxious Generation. It's about kind of about y- your generation, yeah, yeah. about people who grew up with the phones. You know, you're a little bit older, but it's um, maybe a little bit younger than you, but they grew up just with the phones. And they're now realizing that like it's causing, it's not good. I mean, it, yeah. you didn't do that many much research to figure it out, yeah. but it's not good. So I think like LAUSD just passed a, a law where there's not going to be phones in schools anymore. Thank God. Thank God. You know, so, but I think what's going to, the difference is I think that my, my youngest daughter, Penny, is going to grow up in sort of this like weird new sort of like digital prevention age where I think my kids are like, you know, they, they're they they're they're around. They go on their iPads. They do their thing. Right. They, yeah. They're texting all their friends all the time. They just do that because that's part of their way they live. Culture. Where I like think part of our, yeah. I think it's going to change drastically for her, I, th- I think, just based ha- on what's going on. Have you changed? I'm so curious because I know I did. Have you changed? As a parent, like, have you learned things? I'm yes. always curious about that. Have you learned things as you've uh, now on your third kid? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like what you were discussing, the idea that trying not to be so like helicopter helicoptery over these kids and sort of like let them live and let them be kids. Because yeah. my first son, we were like, just like, is he breathing? Yeah. You know, and now like that's my joke where it's like we didn't let him even get his iPad till he was eight. And like Penny, who's two, has already seen Saw 1, 2 and 3. Yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and wrote, so, written reviews yeah so we were like you know on top of them and i feel like penny we're just like it's like having like a 40 year old single woman in the house you yeah. know like, <laughs> i would say that actually is the youngest of four boys yeah my oldest brother had a ton of rules and i think i felt like my only rule was don't die <laughs> yeah. come home you're, eventually. you're the youngest exactly. i'm the youngest it was yeah, yeah we yeah okay so is there anything that your your parents um like did growing up like in a way that they parented you that you said you would never do when you were a parent, but still ended up doing. Well, that's a good question. Yelling. 
Yeah, like a yell. You like can't, I, I, you, 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 you can't, can't not, not yell. You can't not yell. You know, it's Kids like, are dumb. We, I like my, my my company is called Screaming Elliot Productions because yeah, my dad that. was always screaming at us, and, he, and all my friends call like friends called him the Wolf because he was always just screaming, oh, screaming, which is even funnier because knowing that he always was like smoking weed, Hi. I think he'd be more calm. Yeah, you know, now he's just like chilling. He's like so cool, but like he was always screaming at us all the time. So I'm like, I don't want to be screaming all the time, but I do. <laughs> I remember it's hard were, not he, to. He's right? only ever. He's only honestly like not he, like scream like yell, but like you know you have to. I, that's how they will no, not 100%. stop doing what they're doing. A hundred percent. But I really like anytime. I, I could probably only go a hand like legit a handful of times. You ever really raised your voice at me? I because I remember my dad. I remember saying the same thing. I'm not gonna scream because I remember turning off when he screamed, mm -hmm. and not only did I not like the way it made me feel. But I don't remember any hearing anything. I just remember how I felt right. when he was screaming. And I was like, this is the most ineffective way of communication. Like if I really want to, so, but my mom never raised her voice. But when she did, I was like, oh, she's serious. Yeah. So I was like, the only time I've ever gone to raise my voice is when I need to really yeah. let them know. And that's like what I, that, that's sort of what I do. But yeah. they know, you know, like that's they, the they, way they, they know. Do, right? They yeah. know. They yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It does help. Is there something that you. OK, is there something you hope your kids get from you and something that you don't I hope they don't get from you? I mean, I hope they get like my sort of optimism, you know, like yeah. I sort of always like look for the best and feel like yeah. positive and hope that, you know, wish for the best for things to happen. I hope they do that. I hope they don't get um, my uh, crippling shopping addiction. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, retweet <laughs> we were talking about uh, the sneakers uh, earlier yeah and no I, I i actually hope that they don't get um my sort of like i just don't read you know like i don't read <laughs> me either i don't read oh, yeah. and i like Are we high five and not reading <laughs> absolutely is that what just happened you for nerds I, yeah so i like have so many books <laughs> i've read all the high five not reading <laughs> i'll we'll do it again I, yeah that's right on. books are for nerds um so i <laughs> And my my wife reads a lot, so I want them to, uh, and they are already readers. But I, I hope that they stick with that because that is just something that I just like. I don't read enough. You I want to read. It's on my to do list. It's on my New Year's resolution. I got piles of books. I've read all the comedy books. Yeah, you me know. Too. But like, but like, you know, if someone's even the book that I said, The Anxious Generation, I have not read that book, but I'm talking about it. It's but, so funny because I was awesome. like, oh, I'm gonna go get this book. Yeah, just, just, I'm, it. Just start I'm, audio booking it. Yeah, I'm gonna read it. I have it, but I. I'm ready yet, so I want them to read more. I have one more that's a good answer. I have one more question. How long have you been saying you you were going to read that book? Oh, like three months. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's not that bad. No, I, I was going to read. It. I have to. When what, he said three, I thought he was going to say three years. What's I was the like, different yeah. role that you you and your wife play? Like, do you like do you know somebody's usually a disciplinarian? Somebody's like like what when your kids like how do you think they see you guys? I mean, they, she hates it, but they see me as like fun dad, yeah. yeah. You know, and they see her as serious mom. <laughs> but that, every but but every once in a while, it switches, and then they use that against us. They're like, well, now now mommy's the fun mom. <laughs> I'm just like, when you get old, when they get older, who are they gonna ask for money? You or your or your wife? Definitely me. <laughs> Hey, they're probably, I was going to say, who are they going to, yeah. they're, they're going to ask you first to like go hang out with friends or like go do something like that. Yeah, yeah, they're like, I need somebody because they're if, if they ask their mom, she's going to be like, okay, let's go on Facebook Marketplace and get something from the Buy Nothing group. Like that's how she lives yeah, her life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fun. She's like, I, I got a bag of sweaters <laughs> off of Tahunga. Take these. <laughs> I, I have to say, man, I, I've, I, I think parenting in a way is so much harder right now. Yeah. It's stressful. It's stressful because you're being judged all the time. Right. People don't let you just parent and however you want to parent. By complete strangers. If you post something about your kids, somebody's going to say something about why are they, who yeah, are they. Yeah, I know. It's so, it's so hard. It's also like something that my dad pointed out that I hadn't thought of until he pointed it out. He was like, you know why it was easier for us is that when you came home from school, all the outside influences were gone. We officially got to parent you and instill in you whatever we wanted to instill with no, no, no phone, none of your friends. You weren't in contact with anybody. Look, we had, we used the landline. We had 10 minute limits on the phone calls because every phone call costs money. 
Right. Right. And so he was like, it's so much easier to influence and shape your kids. He was like, I don't know how you do it now. Right. Because no matter what you say, you're not the biggest influence in their life. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a. It's so, Kid Leroy. It is, dude. It's, <laughs> love, it's love is music, up, by the way. Me too. It's me this, too. It's we'll high five that also. Who's that guy? He's high fiving you, oh, Kid yeah. Leroy. Who's oh. this guy? What's up, brother? Yeah, it's this guy. <laughs> Sketch. What's up, brother? But like, it's t- special it, teams, special plays. Special players. A 30 second TikTok all of a sudden that you never know they saw yeah. changes their whole fucking life. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't know how you, I don't know how you guys do it. What do you mean you're anti Israel? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? How did that happen? How did that happen? Um, listen, um, man. I got one more. Yeah. One more before we get out of here. Mm-hmm. Uh, best parenting advice. Best parenting advice is this for to somebody who's already has kids or somebody who's about to have kids. Someone's Which about is- to have kids. Someone for me, like I'm not about to have kids, but like uh, this is a question I always ask for people who come on this podcast because everyone's always got a different answer and it's well, always for like different things. I would say um, Kenny Garcia said this to me because I was hanging out with him when I first had my my son was like one and Rachel was pregnant and he was saying it just goes by so fast, which yes. is so cheesy and so over you've heard this so many times but it it goes by so fast that he was like you should record their voices you know and that's something that i do like record their voices and we do these like videos and it's just it's it's insane how fast i mean my son graduated elementary school you know like he's now gonna be only in like our place for like another seven years like it's it's very weird um how fast it goes by and my wife hates that i say that but i really can't believe it anymore and i don't know if it's because of kids or whatever it is but time is just like insane right? i would say when you have kids the days go by slowly but the years go by very quickly yeah like and i would also add in for for parents like you said time goes by quickly there's going to be a day the last day the last time you pick your kid up well you don't know when that is yeah that last time so like cherish all of those moments but i would say the most important thing is don't take everything so seriously yeah when you when you ask them to get in the bath or clean up their room it it depends on what tone you want to take. Right. It's how they're going to receive that. Yeah, well, we've realized because like our nighttime routine is a fucking goddamn nightmare shit show. So there's been times where like we are both losing our mind because like we can't get them in the shower. Yeah. Penny's crying this way. He won't he won't put on pajamas. They don't want to take a shower. They didn't do anything that they're sweaty. You know, all these conversations. Yeah. And then but then we realize when we sort of just are casual about it, it's just so much a better night. Um, they are picking up your energy. I know that, that that's the hardest part. The hardest part I feel like as a parent is to sort of like drop your energy of the day or your life or your career and that's going on and just sort of be present with them and help them sort of move through, you know, their evening, you know, as kids who have other things going on and they don't care what the fuck happens at all, right. you know? Yeah. So it's, that's the hardest part. They, they, that's the thing is that they weren't in that meeting. Yeah. So why you're short with them about getting in the shower? Yeah. Yeah. Just seems very personal to them. Yeah. It just feels like why, why is this such a, why is this turning into why a Why is it thing? such a big deal? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But li- well, I mean, it's a big deal because your ass smells, but that's a different story. Yeah, exactly. Like, you get in the shower. <laughs> I, I like, love the, I didn't do anything to sweat, so I don't have to take a shower. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, you can say that every day, guys, because none of you do sports. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, are you talking about you didn't sweat in your podcast? Yeah, buddy? exactly. What's going on? Here, about Dan. Yes. First of all, dude. Yes. I'm so happy whenever I get to reconnect with you. Yeah, me too. I love you. I mean, you're just like the best dude. We used to see each other at LA Fitness working out. The the worst gym that was ever ever created in Los you, Angeles. You, you could S- be. Start you, off as Bally's Fitness. Yes. Then it became LA Fitness. Yes. And then now it's got bulldozed recently. Wait, that whole, wait, that complex got bulldozed yeah, finally? Yeah, they're building it up. It's, it's actually looking really nice. I don't know what's going in there yet, but Dude, it's really, it looks brand new finally. I mean, it was I, really, the when worst I first moved ever. to LA, I joined Bally's Fitness. Me and, too. And I got there and I had nothing to do. And there was a contest to win the elliptical trainer. And I go, I'm going to fucking win this elliptical trainer. I don't know why I wanted it. I didn't, what was the contest? The contest was just put you, they're going to pull your name out of a hat. So I put a like a hundred 
of my names in the hat. Um, and then they're like, it's going to be, we're drawing the names Tuesday at 9 a.m. And I was like, I could be there. So I just like showed up and I waited and they pulled names and no one was there because it was like this obscure time. And then they're like, Dan Levy. And I was like, yes. <laughs> no, you want it? I want it. So I called my buddy AJ and I was like, hey, uh, could you, do you have a car? Do you have a car? Like I just moved to LA and he's like, I got a Wrangler. I was like, all right, come Perfect. meet me. And then we had to pick up the fucking little trainer, put it in the Wrangler, and we drove back to our apartment. And he was like, are you ever going to use this? And I was like, every day. And we ne- never, no. I use it as a time machine and in to a hang sketch. Your clothes. Yeah, and to hang our clothes. I was going to say, did you ever even take it out of the fucking box? No. Yeah, Do you no. know what I loved about that LA Fitness? What? Every TV, anybody who did guest star roles in the <laughs> 70s worked out at that LA Fitness and yes. still was talking about the biz. Oh yeah. That it was a bunch of older dudes and, and women and they were talking about it. You know, I guest starred on the phone guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was on the bionic man. I saw know? Miles Teller there. Yeah, exactly. You we, Miles Teller I used saw to work Miles out Teller there. there and Chris Evans. Wow. I never saw Chris I, I saw, I did a whole joke about it for years, but I saw Justin Timberlake. May, maybe. No, you did not. Yes, no, I did. No, you did. At May, that same one? Yeah, maybe it was because of like, it was so shitty that it was like very under the radar. There's no paparazzi it, outside Bally's Little no, Fitness. There was, but there dude. was a lot of, there. that's why I saw a lot of like, I saw, oh, ready for this? There, yeah. I worked there at 19 for wow. about six to seven months. What year was that? 20. Eight years ago. 2016? Oh wow! It was still it was really going downhill then. Oh, oh dude, I was that at equipment. The, was I was yes. at the very end of dangerous. It. But I yeah. remember I saw you were at LA Fitness when, when your show when you got your the Josh Wolf show was yeah. happening. Yeah, like we you, you well, celebrated some moments there. I, I, also, loved, I, I, I loved, loved that grimy gym. gyms. I yeah, love me too. Gym. I still I, I I I still love grimy. I, I had the, was going to the best gym in the valley called Built, and it just closed. Where was that? It was like Ventura Place. It was so shitty, and uh, it was so great, and, and yeah. also very funny people there. But they closed the gym, so now I love that gym because yeah, it was. Was a little rundown, and yeah, I was the youngest person there by seventy-five years. Right, but <laughs> but Crazy. it was empty. I could get on the squat machine. I could get on freeways. I could get. I could get in there, knock out a workout in forty-five minutes without being interrupted. Yeah, it was great. No, it was always I, empty. I used to go to the stairmaster all the time. That's where I'd see you. Yeah, and there was this one um, nuts British woman. Do you remember this woman? She was like. She should have had like a, a a crime podcast because she was obsessed with crime and like trying to get people out of jail. But she wasn't in like she wasn't a lawyer. She was psychotic, like mentally ill. And she'd be like, can you believe the D- she, D.A.? And she'd be like talking to me about like, we got we got to bail this guy out. He's innocent. And I was like, who are you talking about? She's obsessed with um, innocent serial killers. That was her thing. Oh, no. She's innocent. By the way, by so way. I would like turn around if I walked in the gym like early. And she was on the treadmill with like a, a yellow notepad. I was like, I got to go home. I can't deal with this right now. This Yo, one, of, one of my favorites from that <laughs> gym. Amazing. Oh, yeah, I have a lot of favorites from that gym. It was like there you would go in there, especially working there for a certain amount of time. Like it was just you'd see the same people every day, every specific day. And they would always be there. It was remember that. Remember that uh, that that uh, older Asian woman who always wore the Patriot shirt. And she always had like she definitely had about 75 tape. Tape are you, faces are you face talking tapes? about the one with the enormous fake titties? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she yeah, yeah. was. She was an old. <laughs> she had the most. I porn think I star. remember that. Yes. I remember her. Yes. She, she, yeah. She had. She had plastic surgery in all the wrong places. Like, like all of it. I was like, honestly, you should just look old at this point. Also, like you know you, who, I think you look not as great now with all this. No, that's tape no happening. one needs that. Also, you know who's there was that you, you ever see that actor? He's like re, the really big um, actress, black guy who was on. He was in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes. He was in some Sandler movies. Yes. That guy is like eight feet tall. And I would see him a lot. He was a nice guy. What about the guy who owned the fitness store? Oh, next that door guy who looked like Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I loved and, him. And, and sexy nutrition. Yeah. yeah. Yes, the, best, the best name for a store ever. They closed, Sexy they nutrition. closed down before the LA Fit. Sexy yeah. Nutrition. His name was Roland. Roland yeah, he was yes. jacked. Roland was jacked. And a but wicked he, nice guy. He, yeah, he was a nice guy. He was on Son of a Beach with t- with that's, Tim Stack. That's what he was. Right, right yeah, because that was his big the, break. Because he had like the posters up. I was, I was always like, how is he paying for this? Tim like, Stack, that's his name, right? The writer he created. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Man, but but what I love about the valley, and we're gonna rev on this, dude, is that's where all of the older movie TV people yeah, are. I yeah. love it. And you bump into like I bump into I used to watch Santa Barbara, the soap opera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I would bump into these old like Santa Barbara stars at what's the name of the 
of the Mexican food place on Ventura. Chico's. Oh no, on on, on Ventura. On Ventura, right in Studio City, like Mexicali. The, Mexicali. Oh, Mexicali closed, but yeah, that was that it was, closed. It closed. It's Umami right. Burger now, dude. It's been closed for yeah. a Umami decade. Burger, I think, closed now too. That place, yeah, Mexicali that place, was like, the, the place. I know, and dude, the shittiest Mexican food, the worst Mexican food. Dude, Mexicali's been closed for a long yeah. ass time. Mexicali's great Pre-COVID? though. Pre-COVID? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. No, dude. Or maybe it, maybe right during COVID. I remember it. I feel. Like I remember Mex- also when I moved to LA, it was like such a good spot, such a good happy hour spot. Like, but the food dude, was. Not I feel good. like Mexicali's been closed since 2018. The last time I went to Mexicali. Our, my dog walker married somebody. Okay, ready for this? Oh, my dog walker married somebody, and we had she had the wedding at a dog at a pet place on Ventura. There were five people invited to the wedding. Well, five couples. Beth and I were one couple. The other the other couple that came was Gary Oldman and his son. Yeah. Judd Nelson came solo. Okay. It was a weirdest group. Weird group. And then Judd Nelson the did a to- wedding. did a toast at Mexicali, and everyone was like, "Okay, that was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, it was fucking amazing. It was the craziest that's, group. But this is the kind of thing that it only happens, happens in the valley. Yeah. yeah. By the way, that's not the breakfast club. That's the lunch club. <laughs> like, dude, that is the <laughs> that's the blue plate special club. At that's that the early bird special. Yeah, that oh kind God, of shit. That's yeah. amazing. Dude, tell everybody where they can find you and what you're doing. Um, they can find me on uh, Instagram um, at Dan Levy Show. That's where all my stuff is. Um, also on TikTok, Dan Levy Comedy. Um, I couldn't. I, I I forgot the password to Dan Levy Show on TikTok. So now I'm Dan, Dan Levy Comedy. <laughs> you know you can hit forgot <laughs> password <laughs> is the oldest I was just shit saying, you, know, I you, have you know you can ever. say you can hit I know, forgot I know, password. You but it's like fuck. too annoying and it's a whole fucking thing. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and and also, you know, I got all my clips on my YouTube and um, yeah, I'm just I'm performing. I'm all in L.A. right now. So I'm doing um, comedy store on Saturday, but I don't know. I don't know when this airs. So it's I'm just in L.A. right now. I'm not touring. Uh, I, and I will tell you guys, first of all, comedian Josh Wolf dot com for all tour dates. Um, Josh Wolf comedy online. If you like my stories about him and my family, you're going to love Dan. Like you, you really and I would say that my comedy, a lot of times, I, you know, I make you laugh with dance moves. And <laughs> Dan actually writes good jokes. <laughs> yeah, I did they, dance moves too. Yeah, but but, they, but you know what I mean. There's a difference. Like you, yeah, right. I, you might have a little I'm more like, movement yeah. than him right now, though. <laughs> but you you are a, a, a like a top notch joke writer. Oh, thank you. And performer, which is a hard thing. A lot of times, you'll watch somebody on stage and you're like. Oh, those are great jokes, but I know why he's not doing stand up. Right. Because he's tough to watch. Right. It's a <laughs> yeah. tough, it's a tough yeah, yeah, watch. Yeah, yeah. But you are a great combination of a great joke writer and so fucking likable on stage. I'm so, as somebody who's a fan of stand up comedy, I'm so glad that you're back in it because you took a little. Yeah. 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 You took some time off to have a. Yeah. You were the person who texted me and said, I'm so glad to see you back in. I really am, man. Yeah. I, yeah. And I love, I'm a comedy nerd and I watch everybody's stand up. You're super funny, man. So Thank I'm super you. happy that you're I back. I appreciate it. Tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Uh, like he said, uh, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates and tickets. I don't know when this is going to air. So go online and see where we're going to be this summer because uh, I couldn't tell you where we're going to be. Um, but yeah, man, it was great to meet you. Great it was, to meet it you. It was great to do this. And, I love uh, it. I, I'm definitely going to dive into some comedy. I'm glad to know you're not Dan Schneider. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's glad too. I'm yeah, glad too. Right? I'm yeah. glad too. Um, and uh, yeah, from what I, this, was, this was super fun. Next time we'll do a little another sneaker compare, but uh, I will definitely, I definitely want to jump in and see what you got. Um, and uh, yeah, and yeah. that's it for us. Awesome. Hey, I love you. Love you too. Love you. Love you. Love oh, you. Man. I love it. And Great. as and as always, love this. Love this studio, by the way. Yeah. The and as always, right? do something nice for someone today. Tell somebody you love them. We'll see you next week. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're gonna love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.